Good afternoon and welcome to Creating Profitable Green Business Strategies. I would like to welcome you all and thank you for taking the time to join us today. I would first like to address a few logistical issues for the session and then introduce Boris Breifogel. A lot of material is planned for this one hour webinar, so the audio will be muted for the remainder of the presentation to ensure that Forrest is able to get through the entire presentation in the time allowed. We will not be able to hear you, but you will be able to hear Forrest. Do not let this stop you from sending us text questions through the system during the presentation. We value your questions, and if Forrest cannot answer your questions either during or at the end of the webinar, we will either email or call you with a response. There will also be a recording of the webinar available on our website within 48 hours. Please know that as a participant in this webinar, someone with Smarter Solutions will be giving you a follow-up call. If you do not want us to contact you, please let us know in the feedback survey at the end of the webinar. I will now introduce Forrest Breifogel. Forrest is a professional engineer, ASQ fellow, and serves on the Board of Advisors for the University of Texas Center for Performance Excellence. In 2004, he received the Crosby Medal for his book, Implementing Six Sigma, Second Edition. Forrest has authored or co-authored 11 books and published over 100 technical articles for well-known worldwide publications. He is the founder and CEO of Smarter Solutions. He has recently completed a four-book series on the Integrated Enterprise Excellence System, which are now available. Again, thank you for joining us today, and at this time, I will turn the presentation over to Forrest. Thank you, Mallory. This webinar is going to address the integration of green strategies into the system of doing business. Now, as part of signing up, for this webinar, we ask you to um, give us insight to how your company's strategies are developed. Boy, did we get a variety of answers. Um, from some of them, so one answer was dealing with behind closed doors of the executives to the ball reach award, or excuse me, the ball reach criteria is a way to do this, to uh, some other methodologies. But I think for um, as, as many people as signed up, there were just about as many different answers. So what I'm going to really try to do in the end is tie green together with uh, uh, the business strategies. And, and also this technique is just not only applicable for green integration, but creating strategies in general. Now much has been said about becoming more green. Uh, who can argue with such kind of statements? You know, we live, we all live on planet Earth, and who can argue that we need to protect its resources? But the question is, how do we accomplish this from a big picture point of view? To begin addressing this question, let's first ask the fundamental question, should companies consider green as a vision or as a strategy? Secondly, let's be blunt about this. Business can do a great job with green, but go out of business. Hence, we need to address the organizational benefits of going green. Finally, this session will describe a system for addressing these needs. Now, before we begin, we'd like to uh, have a poll, and we'd like for you to uh, go in and give us a response relative to uh, how you're participating in this webinar. Okay, it looks about 60% have voted here. 75, okay, give it five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, it looks like uh, general interest in green is about 50%. Okay, that seems to be the highest one. And interest in using Lean Six Sigma skills in green areas, okay. And then interest in Lean Six Sigma skills at an enterprise level, which Diana has a almost an even vote with the other one. Okay, great. Well, appreciate that. Now, this webinar will integrate green into the business governance system that is described in the book, Integrated Enterprise Excellence, Volume 2, Business Deployment. So 
if you're looking at more of the details on how to implement this overall system, then that's where you can uh, find that roadmap. Green is really the right thing to do. However, organizations often jump into the latest trend bad wagon. But what typically happens with these efforts? This type of work often leads to activities that can become siloed, where organizations lose focus when times get tough, or the spotlight focus diminishes. If green can be linked to the financials, then it has more chance of becoming sustainable and not becoming a program of the month or an effort that just has lip service. Haven't we all seen positional statements that an organization will be taking on green in one form or fashion? These statements are not bad. However, more often than not, these statements are more of a vision, really rather than a specific corporate strategy. Now, vision statements describe where we want to be, while strategies are how the business will meet its objectives. In a for-profit company, strategy should be given primary focus to the financials, that is profit margins and total revenue growth. When we start with the financials, some fundamental questions can be asked. Let's consider the following to address this point. What can be done to increase sales, reduce operating costs, reduce inventory, and improve employee loyalty? If you note, customer satisfaction was not included in this question. Now why? Customer satisfaction does not necessarily lead to buying behaviors. I'm not saying that customer satisfaction is not important, but only suggesting that is more appropriate metric that ties more directly to the financials would be customer loyalty. Also, I did not include helping the community as a strategy. Please note, I did not mean to imply that it is not important to help the community, but only that in general, helping the community should not be considered a strategy. To establish a non-silo environment for a green initiative that can withstand the test of time, we want green initiatives that are positive or neutral to the financials, while at the same time being beneficial to the environment. When someone is assigned the task of making the company green, the person can have difficulty determining where to start for such a large task. Because of this, the person leading the green initiative might start by investigating what other organizations are doing and then mimic activities that he or she thinks would be the easiest to take on, at least when starting out. Another approach would be to consider green as part of their overall performance measurement, which has the opportunity for improvement. Before we go into this any further, I'd like to uh, have another poll. So please uh, check the appropriate box, so to speak, and then we'll look at how people uh, vote on this particular issue. About 50% has voted. 60, oh, let's go with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, well, thank you. Let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like about a uh, quarter of you are looking at developing strategies, and others, quarters about individual interest, and uh, pretty much an even distribution for the other aspects of the other points. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. In businesses, strategies are often created as step one in their business system. Perhaps an executive retreat or organizational work is then to align to these strategies. Performance operational goals are then typically assigned to functions throughout the organization, where there is a tracking system that assesses how well these goals are being met. This common practice can sound quite attractive, but, is this, but this approach can lead to unhealthy organization behavior, whether green or not. 
To create long-lasting systems, organizations need to have stability at the front end of their business, even through leadership and economic environmental changes. The Integrated Enterprise Excellence, or the IEEE nine-step system, provides this front-end foundation in steps one and two. Strategies are important and need to be created through a wise blending of analytics with innovation. IEEE addresses this creation by in, uh, this creation of strategies in step five of this nine-step process. The process for implementing this business management system is well documented in volume two in my book. Let's now walk through the front end of this nine-step IWE system. Step one, that is to describe your organization's vision and mission. Now, a vision statement outlines what the organization wants to be in the future and a source for inspiration, which can include a green statement. A mission statement describes the primary organizational purpose. Mission and vision statements are the foundation for an organization's building. Step two is describe the value chain, including satellite level and 30,000 foot level metrics where this form of high-level tracking system has no calendar constraints. I will later be going into the step further and its linkage to green metrics and improvement initiatives. Step three, analyze the enterprise. In this step, the enterprise is analyzed as a whole looking for improvement opportunities in the areas of constraints, defect reduction, waste elimination, new product development, and other business performance issues. This evaluation might be considered as business 101. However, often traditional business analyses do not structurally blend a formal process analytics with 30,000 foot level value chain metrics and risk assessments like IWE does. Step four is establish financial goals for corporate and operational units. IWE financial metrics are tracked as satellite level financial metrics that are not founded by calendar year. An enterprise IWE's satellite level metrics could be profit margins and annualized growth rate. Now revenue goals are to be smart, that is specific measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-based. In addition, financial goals need to be realistic and consistent with improvement opportunities. Step five is create strategies. Develop strategies to improve performance when operational metrics are not achieving financial established goals for operational and corporate units. Focus needs to be given to creating strategies that are specific and benefit the big picture. Effective blending of analytics with innovation can result in strategies that can significantly benefit the enterprise as a whole. Targeted green strategies developed in this, stress, in this step need to focus on improving the green value chain metric identified in step two. Steps five through nine describe the execution of process improvement efforts and business goals or business controls. Now note how step nine loops back to step three, not step one. Improvements to this system will be reflected in the value chain described procedures and its metrics that are described as part of step two for not only green, but other business improvements as well. Consider how the organization's vision and missions are adequate and there with, with a green included statement. A value chain will show functional linkages in conjunction with a no nonset metric system so that organizations can reduce playing games with the numbers. 30,000 foot level operation and satellite financial metrics separate common cause from special cause occurrences so that organizations can get out of the firefighting mode. 
an organizational value chain can become the cornerstone of a long-lasting system that maintains its integrity through organization leadership and changes. The organization chart is subordinate to the value chain. That's a very important point. Now, how does it work? An organization's value chain describes what the enterprise does and its performance measures of success. From a customer and business point of view, in the areas of cost, quality, and time. In this value chain, the rectangular boxes provide clickable access to process steps, functional value streams, and procedural documents. The center series of rectangular box described functions describe the primary business flow, and the rectangular boxes that are not in this series describe other support functions, for example, legal and finance. The ovals in the value chain describe the metrics for the functional procedures. One point I would like to highlight is that with this system, the organizational chart is subordinate again to the value chain. The benefits of this is that functional procedures and their performance metrics will not change with reorganizations. Only process ownership and its accompanying performance metrics will change. Now, the implication of this is that the value chain becomes a long-lasting organizational front-end foundation, even through leadership changes. Now, let's look at this from a green point of view. Some current value chain metrics already have a green implementation metric associated with them, such as defective rates. That is, whenever defective rates are reduced, there would be less scrap, which is a positive positive environmental impact. Now what I've done here is I've only listed the green metrics for our value chain. Now organizations need to determine what green metrics that are important to their business. So we listed like energy use, waste generation, percent carpooling, travel expenses, packing and shipping, carbon footprint, defective rates, emissions, and hazardous waste. So those are the ones that we chose, but you might have some other ones within your value chain. Now what I have listed on this slide are areas that businesses could consider one determinant green metric. So we're looking at reduction of energy cost, variable expenses, for example, packaging material, transportation cost, and waste reduction. So these things, as I mentioned, are part of the overall value chain that we might want to highlight as metrics that we consider which are aligned with green. Lloyd Nelson made the statement, if you can improve productivity, our sales or quality, or anything else by 5% next year without a rational plan for improvement, then the question is, why were you not doing it last year? The point is the simple setting of goals for metrics that is green or otherwise does not make it happen. This could be considered management by hope whenever somebody undertakes this as a management strategy. Now organizations need to have a system to analyze their metrics collectively so that they can establish goals for value chain, functional, operation, predictive reporting metrics, which are most important to the business relative to meeting its financial, satellite level metrics reported metrics and its goals. Okay, we'll now simulate an execution of the nine steps that we talked about earlier with an integration of green. Note how green was included as a vision as opposed to a strategy or you might consider it to be core, uh, core value. But again, it's not a direct strategy the way we're approaching this. Now the reason is that we will later be developing strategies for achieving financial success with the inclu inclusion of green thinking. We will do this by starting from our initial value chain. 
The circled item is a satellite level metric that we will be focused on. That is profit margin. Now we need to highlight that with this IWE metric or methodology, uh, green is not listed as a separate silo strategy that can disappear over time. With this approach, green is part of the enterprise vision and will not change over time. Now what will change over time is analytically and innovatively determined strategies that can impact value chain determined green metrics. In IEEE, satellite level and 30,000 foot level metrics are tracked over time and are not bounded by calendar year. In IEEE metric tracking, we look for regions of stability as determined by the satellite level individual's control chart on the left hand side of the figure shown. Now for those that are familiar with control charting, these control charts are list that we have listed here are quite different. Now, I don't have time to go into these differences for this session here, but those who are interested can contact me offline. Now when there is a recent region of stability, as the graph indicates in this slide, we can say that the process is predictable. Data from the latest region of stability can then be considered a random sample of the future. Now when this is done, we can, for continuous data, create a probability plot to estimate what we expect in the future, assuming that nothing positive, for example, a process improvement effort, or negative occurs. Now, if we don't like what we predict, it would be appropriate to create an improvement project that is to determine what should be done differently to improve these metrics. In this particular case, we estimate that the current level of monthly performance has a median of about 13.9% profit margins, with 80% of the months expected between 10.4 and 17.4. We would like to undertake green effort that is to improve profit margins or at least not degrade the current level of performance. Consider now that defective rate was determined to be a green metric that we would that would be avail, uh, valuable to the business to improve. The 30,000 foot level metric tracking for defective rates show a recent region of stability since day 16, and data from this current region of stability can be used to project the future relative to failure rate and expected types of failures. Other value chain metrics, green and otherwise, can similarly be assessed for other potential improvement opportunities. Now within step four, SMART goals are set for the satellite level metrics, that is specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-based. Note how the financial metrics goals are not pie in the sky numbers, but are set considering where we are currently operating with consideration of where the industry is currently operating. Satellite level financial goals can be translated to 30,000 foot level operational goals. For the defective rate that we will be examining, we will set the goal of a 50% reduction in this rate in eight months. The owner of this process and its metrics will need to be need to have someone available to work in a specific area to determine what can be done to the process to improve its performance. Note, that is the simple setting of goals will not make goal achievement happen. Shown in the, third, the far right column of this Enterprise Improvement Plan, or EIP, is nine areas that could both improve financials, but also green metrics. To illustrate one of these specific projects, drill downs, we will start with goal, profit, 
increased to 15% in 12 months. Next, we will move to the strategy of reducing variable costs. We will then move to a high potential area of reducing scrap, which leads us to targeted efforts for the reduction of defect one. The green and positive financial impact of improvements in this area are reduced waste generation, reduced energy need to remake scrap, reduce shipping costs, that is less fuel used to transport defective parts. So as you can see, if we're able to reduce the defect, defective rates of defect type 1, then we're going in and doing the right thing for green as a whole. Now this particular slide shows a, a larger version of that same EIP graphic of the drill down to defect one. So you can look on the right hand side, we're talking about reducing waste generation for landfills and see how that's lined to the overall business needs. And we're uh, looking at using raw material more efficiently, less material need to be procured. So that's another one that lines over to the, the goals of the business relative to the financials. But Still, it's also uh, a very positive impact for the green as a whole relative to the organization. Now this graphic shows other potential improvements that can have both green and financial benefits. So hopefully from this you got the idea on how we can go in and determine how we can get to specific activities that are aligned to the overall financials of the business as a whole and also um, be very green in spirit for the organization as a whole. Just to reiterate, through this EIP system, nine initiatives were identified that could not only help green metrics, but the financials as well. If all nine projects were undertaken, each of the nine teams should follow a nine, uh, excuse me, a project execution roadmap so that the right tool is used at the most appropriate time. If we move to step eight, we will examine the impact of improving efforts to the organizational financials as tracked using satellite level metric reporting. As can be seen in this graph, the combined process improvement efforts in the green targeted areas and other areas as well as improved, have improved the metrics to a new level of stability of at least 15% in the 12 month desired time frame. For the stage defect reduction effort that was described earlier, our overall defective rate did decrease. Notice, noticing that this defective 30,000 foot level metrics has all defects included, where type 1 was the largest, largest targeted area of the process improvement project. With step 9 of the 9 step process effort, we are given to maintaining the gain. This step loops back to step three for the ongoing process improvement efforts in green and other areas as well. Again, note how with this step process we are not looping back to step one. With this system, the value chain in step two will be experiencing improved procedures and performance metrics from work that is being done through steps three through nine. Consider with the described approach, what did we do differently? We did not pick green strategic target areas based on intuition and our emotion. We baselined the business performance so that we could assess the impact from changes. We set strategies after performance measurements were set and analyzed. We strive to improve our environment 
to agreeing without risking business health. Okay, with this in this webinar, we addressed how often green efforts that have good intentions are siloed and do not have direct linkage to business success. Through the value chain, green metrics can be coordinated with other business metrics needs. And finally, green efforts should be lead to business success in measurable ways. We would like to thank you for participating in today's webinar with a discount for these four books. As I noted, the basic thought process and system for accomplishing the methodology that we talked about in this webinar is described in detail in Volume 2. Now please be sure to note the coupon code when ordering the books to receive this discount. This offer will expire soon. We'll now take a few minutes to address your questions. Now here's a question. Our business has some specific green metrics that are to improve upon which you do not have listed. Where should these fit into your system? Oh, okay, that's really no problem. You can include these metrics in your value chain. These metrics too should be tracked at the 30,000 foot level metrics. Process improvement goals for these metrics should be included as part of the overall EIP or Enterprise Improvement Plan system. Okay, the question here, does this nine-step method imply that executives have steps one to four done before they go on their executive retreat? Yes, I believe that we need to go in and have the right people working on these steps one through four and the inputs from what they've done, and this could be in Six Sigma term, uh, Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belts may be the one that are actually doing this because you want to go in and analyze the overall system and then you would go in and uh, look at that overall inputs to um, have uh, or have their overall inputs to the executive retreat. And so it's a kind of a paradigm shift for how you're going on and, and taking this on. The other thing that's kind of important with all this is a lot of times the measurements within the organization are aligned to strategies. And sometimes the strategies that can come out of traditional executive retreats are kind of hard to get your arms around through the balance scorecard or Hoshin planning. Uh, so what I'm suggesting is it's a little different system here in that the value chain is a long-lasting um, uh, front end to the organization. And uh, that's not going to change fundamentally if you've got different strategies. And it's, if you make improvements, the metrics are going to change and also the process steps themselves are going to change. So uh, uh, it's got a different spin on how you put together strategies. But yes, the steps one through four should be done before um, the uh, strategies are created. Oh, incidentally, also what you do is like to have strategies so they're somewhat dynamic uh, throughout the year. So it's not just an annual event and then we measure everybody these strategies. but uh, we can actually tweak those strategies and they get, uh, and again, they're worded so you can get your arms around throughout the year so we uh, go in and uh, uh, continually make adjustments if the economy or whatever else changes throughout the year. So it looks like that's the end of the questions. So uh, again, we we're uh, glad that everybody participated or in the session here and uh, uh, Hopefully you'll go in and respond to our, um, our poll at the end on how, what you thought about this uh, particular webinar. Again, thank you for partici participating. Goodbye.